Hey folks, Anisha here, and I've got a GitHub feature for you to check out. So if you've been following along the GitHub changelog post, you've seen all of the features that we've shipped recently. And let me tell you, we've been shipping a ton of features recently. But for these checkout videos, we'll be hearing more from the folks that have actually built these features and see a demo of them too. So today I've got Megan here, who's gonna be telling us all about issue forms. Megan, over to you. Hi, yeah, uh, my name is Megan O'Neill and I am a senior software engineer in the communities department at GitHub. Um, so I'm gonna tell you all about issue forms. I am super excited about them and it really is kind of what it sounds like. It's basically a form experience for filling out issues. So previously when you'd go to create an issue, you just get this blank uh, WYSIWYG box or if somebody was using Markdown templates, maybe there would be some Markdown in there um, with a couple questions. Here, when you actually go and navigate to it, you'll get a full-fledged form. So think checkboxes, dropdowns, multiple WYSIWYGs. Um, so really enabling folks to get the information that they're looking for. So let's jump into actually building one. So over here, you'll notice that we're just in um, just a demo repo and we are gonna store these uh, templates right inside of the .github folder, inside of the issue template folder in there. And then here is the actual name of our issue form. So it's important to note that it ends in .yaml because we build issue forms with YAML syntax. So let's build out our bug report a little bit more. Um, you'll see on the side here that we actually have some docs just as far as what are the different inputs that we can use. Um, and an example for each, I really love the examples because I totally rely on them for actually building out my issue forms. Um, so let's see, what do we have in our bug report right now? We have some markdown, we have a text area, um, but maybe we wanna add a drop down to actually ask folks like, where are you seeing this issue? Maybe it's the web, maybe it's an API, um, maybe it's mobile. So let's scroll down in our docs until we get to a dropdown. So let's copy this on over. And the really nice part about this is that when you do copy it, um, it maintains the spacing. And since we're using YAML, the spacing is actually super important. So we'll ask, where did you see this issue? And we'll check in on, maybe it's the web, maybe it's an API, um, and we'll even say, hey, maybe it's mobile. And we'll get this out of here. So you notice that we have this validations um, required down here, and that just means that folks actually have to fill out this field in order to submit the issue. So this is all looking pretty good. Let's do a quick commit. And now let's actually go and fill out one of these issues to see what does an issue form look like from the user side. You'll see here that we have our bug report. So let's go and fill it out. And here you actually have the issue form. So you'll see that we have this little asterisk here, which denotes that the field is required and then the same thing for our dropdown. So in order for me to actually fill out this form and submit it, um, we have to tell somebody what happened. It crashed. Oh no. Hopefully your forms <laughs> and your answers are a little bit better than this. And so where did we see this? So we'll see, we could do the web, uh, maybe the API, great. And now you've filled out your first issue form and it's submitted and it looks exactly like any other issue now. Wow, Megan, I absolutely loved it. I loved everything that you just showed. This is amazing. I just can't believe how easy, you know, issue forms is gonna make everyone's lives. Um, especially, I love the docs that you could literally just copy and paste it and then just tweak the bits. It just, it just makes everyone's lives so much more easier. So I've got a couple questions for you then. Um, who do you think issue forms is really gonna be helping out the most? Yeah, we are super excited about maintainers using issue forms, right? It is vital that maintainers get the information that they need to actually, you know, fix a bug or get a feature request. And all too often, it's really easy to, you know, if you're using a markdown template, say, accidentally delete a question or miss a question that was in there. So I think this really enables maintainers to 
collect the information that they need, whether it's an API version in a dropdown, um, a code sample, or some checkboxes. Um, I think really the big thing too is having required fields so that they're getting higher quality issues submitted. Yeah, definitely for sure. Um, and then I know a lot of folks are using Markdown right now. Um, do you have any tips for folks switching from Markdown templates to issue forms? Totally, yeah. So, you know, as mentioned previously, we are using YAML, so the spacing is super important. Most of the issues that we've seen with, you know, templates being invalid are really just issues with spacing. So like every time, just just copy the example. That's what I do. Like no shame there. Um, also, if there's a nested label, make sure that it does stay nested um, because that's also super important. And there will be like an error banner that appears at the top of the screen once you commit if something is wrong. So totally check that out. Um, you know, if it says something like labels is invalid and you know that that's a required key, it's probably because there's an extra S somewhere. Um, so follow the trail of errors and just use the docs totally. And you should be totally fine. Great. I love it. And I especially love the, the fact that, you know, everything's in the docs and you can literally just copy and paste it and tweak it. And there you have it. Anything to make everyone's lives easier, right? So, <laughs> so folks, uh, go ahead and check out um, issue forms and let us know what you think about it. You can drop your comments down below, hit us up on Twitter, or even just leave your feedback on support community as well. So thanks again, Megan. And folks, stay tuned for more checkout videos coming your way very soon.